You're watching Detroit's own WHPR-TV, Detroit Live. She's a mother, a daughter, sister, friend, medical instructor, and counselor. Welcome to the broadcast of Help Us Near Missionary Ministry. This broadcast is designed to equip individuals with practical biblical teachings from God's Word. Now introducing evangelist, preacher, teacher, Reverend Dr. Monica D. Cronk. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalms 1914, in Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to Help Us Near Missionary Ministry. The table is set, the bread of life is ready, and we are ready to serve you the word of God. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Monica D. Crunk. I invite you now to feel free to grab a pen and some paper for the purpose of taking notes. And by the end of the broadcast, the announcer will give you some valuable information. I have two positive quotes for you today. Ready? Yesterday is not ours to recover, but tomorrow is ours to win or lose. Our second quote for today is, we rise by lifting others. Amen. And now to the best part of life, God's word. We are finally on our last part of this wonderful seven part series on the minor prophet Jonah. If you are able and if you have your Bible, please turn to Jonah chapter four, verse four. Do you recall during our last program, the Lord asked Jonah a question in verse four. He asked this question, doest thou well to be angry, Jonah? Jonah was asked this question, why? because he was not only angry, but he expressed to God why he was so angry. Jonah was given an opportunity. He was given a, an important task on the behalf of the kingdom of heaven. However, Jonah didn't like the task, nor did he want to be used to complete this task. But God was adamant about the task, so much so that Jonah spent three days and three nights in a fish belly due to his disobedience. Well, as you may recall, Jonah prayed while in the belly of the fish and reasoned with God. And God made a decision to cause the fish to vomit Jonah up unto dry land. Now that's God's grace. This reminds me of times as a born again believer, me, myself, when I would make a wrong turn or perhaps walk in the wrong direction, then once I found myself in a tight spot, and I mean tight, with sorrow, regret, and sadness, it was then I found myself calling upon the name of the Lord, asking for his grace. I asked for help and another chance to get it right. Can you recall a time when you was in that same place? Well, we are going to take a brief commercial because the, this particular last part of our series is going to be so great that I want to just keep going without taking a break. So we're going to take a commercial break. But when I return, I have a question for you. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Amen.
Looking for a place to grow and learn all the truths of God? Well, I have the place for you. I'm Reverend Dr. Monica D. Crunk, pastor of Help Us Near Missionary Ministry Church. Worship with us Sunday. Start your morning off with refreshing your soul with Sunday school at 10 a.m. And at 11 a.m., let's worship God together. There are exciting things happening at Help Us Near Missionary Ministry Church. You don't want to miss our midweek fellowship together as we break the bread of life during our Wednesday evening Bible study class that starts at 7 p.m. And afterwards, have a bite to eat with me and all the wonderful saints of God. How awesome is that? We are located in the heart of Taylor, Michigan, 24448 Ecourse Road, Taylor, Michigan, 48180. Again, we are located at 24448 Ecourse Road, Taylor, Michigan, 48180. Call us at 248-636-5793 or write us at P.O. Box 432-032, Pontiac, Michigan, 48343 or by email, Ministry at gmail.com. Help Is Near says thank you to all our supporters and remember, fellowshipping with God is the best part of life. Amen. Welcome back to Help Us Near Missionary Ministry. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Monica D. Grunk. Do you believe God is a God of second chances? Well, I am here to tell you God is a God of second, third, and a multitude of chances. If, now that's the important small word, if your heart is willing to seek him early. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17 states, I love them. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Now, back to the message with Jonah. The message that Jonah was to preach in Nineveh, in the city of Nineveh, was 40 days you have to repent. That was the message. 40 days to change your mind and to change your thinking. 40 days to turn from your wickedness and turn from sin. So whose idea was it to give this message, the opportunity for the people to learn and grow and to change? The answer is God. Whose idea was it to send to the people of Nineveh a preacher to proclaim the message, repent? The answer is God. Remember, repent means to change your mind. The direction in which you were going, you have had a change of mind and you're going in the opposite direction. The message was to repent to the people of Nineveh. Did the people hear the message and obey? Oh yes, they did. They certainly did. And the people also repented. Thus God held back his judgment to destroy the people and their land. But we have one problem still, the preacher, oh Jonah. The preacher that was sent by God, the preacher that received grace himself, he was very angry about the grace that God was sharing with the people of Nineveh. In fact, the preacher was so angry that he himself prayed to God to die because he didn't want those people to repent and be saved. Due to God's goodness, he was angry and the grace toward the people of Nineveh Jonah was angry. Therefore, God asked Jonah in verse 4 this question. Doest thou well to be angry, Jonah? Amen. We must be all so careful and mindful to remember all of God's grace, his mercy and his kindness. He has so graciously bestowed upon us, not only once, twice, and only God knows how many times for you and for me he has given us his mercy and his grace. Grace isn't something we can earn, nor can we win grace. We can't buy it. Grace is unmerited favor and we don't deserve it. But whosoever decides to give grace 
This is an awesome gift. He and she is giving grace. And we should never forget that God is the author of grace. Amen. Who has first implemented that grace by giving his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins and for your sins as well. Each day we wake up to live another day, we are experiencing the grace of God. You believe that? Over and over again, each day we wake up. Now, let's see if Jonah will have any conviction or grace for the people of Nineveh since they decided to repent and follow God in the spirit of truth and in the spirit of the truth of believing God's word preached by the preacher Jonah chapter 4 verses 5 and 6. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city and there made him a booth and sat under it in the shade till he might see what would become of the city. Now imagine it. Jonah was in the city. He preached in the city and he was very angry because he didn't like the message he was preaching. God gave him the message to repent, had 40 days. Jonah didn't like the message, but he preached it anyway. Why? Because he was in the fish belly and he didn't want to be there. So he decided to come out and be half obedient to God. He preached, but didn't like what he preached. So after he preached, he decided he didn't want to even stay in the city with the people. So he came and sat outside the city and he tried to create his own comfort. He tried to create his own shade. And the Lord God prepared a gourd for old Jonah and made it to come up over Jonah, the scripture stated, that it might be a shade over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. I'll tell you in a moment what a gourd is, because Jonah tried to create shade on his own, but through God's grace, God created a gourd for him. And verse five, we see Jonah's attitude and his decision to sit outside the city where there wasn't any shade nor a covering for his head. So why is this so bad, you might ask? Because we understand by the scripture that it was very warm and it was downright hot and sticky outside that city. I might add also, you recall that Jonah is angry of the fact that God is giving the people the opportunity to repent. I keep on emphasizing on that and get their lives right with God. He did not like that. That is so strange. To Jonah, this is misery. And usually misery loves company, doesn't it? But in Jonah's case, he desires to hang out by himself outside the city. Now, what about this gourd that God so graciously gave to Jonah out in the middle of nowhere? A gourd was a plant that was typical of rising high, and in the case of Jonah, it became a plant that gave him shade and covering over his head from the heat thereof. In other words, Jonah received grace from God when he did not deserve it. After all, he was the one who made a decision to leave a city that could have given him all that he possibly desired. It was he that made the decision to hang out in the heat. Something to think about. Have you counted your blessings lately? Have I counted my blessings lately? When was the last time I, or when was the last time you, gave thanks to the creator of the heavens and the earth? It's probably a good time to count our blessings and name them one by one. And once you have finished, counting all your blessings, we might find that everything else around us that we thought was bad may not be as bad as we first thought. Listen, after all, life is 10% of what happens to us and 90% and how we react to it. Mm, that is good. Wow. Now, that's something to think about. Did you know that attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. And positive thinking is more than just a tagline. It changes the way we behave 
And I firmly believe that when I have a positive attitude, it not only makes me better, but it also makes those around me better. And might I add to this positive quote, start your day off with the word of God and with prayer and watch your attitude change the world for the better. I believe that. Now let's see in verse seven of the book of Jonah, if God can help Jonah with this attitude and with his spirit. Verse seven, but God prepared a worm, uh oh, when the morning rose the next day and it smote, the word smote in the King James Version mean it killed the gourd plant. You remember the gourd, that plant, that it withered. So God created a worm and the worm ate the plant. And it came to pass when the sun did arise and it got really hot outside that God prepared, oh my goodness, the Lord keeps preparing things for old Jonah. It's almost like it's a test. It's almost like God is trying to speak to Jonah and trying to help him in his spirit and change his attitude. God prepared a vehement, the word of God said, a vehement or strong, violent east wind. Now remember, if you read the scripture, Jonah, when he left the city after preaching the word of God for God, he went and sat on the east side because it, he thought that it would be a little bit more a shade for him. Now God gave him a gourd, that plant, to give him grace. But Jonah's attitude was still, mm, whatever, whatever. I don't know if he said that, whatever, but it almost sounds like he said, whatever. And so God said, okay then, let's see about this. God prepared a worm. And in the middle of the night, the worm ate the gourd plant. Then, God says, I'm not finished yet. He prepared God a vehement and strong, violent east wind. And the sun beat upon old Jonah's head mm, that he fainted. He was almost like he was ready to faint and ready to die. And Jonah wished himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. Now, here we go again. Jonah is on an emotional roller coaster, isn't he? First, he's happy for the gourd plant because he received shade, amen? Then he's sad because in the middle of the night, a worm ate the gourd plant. And now Jonah doesn't have his blessing of the shade anymore. And he becomes so depressed that he desires to die once again. This is not the first time that Jonah asked to die. Remember the first time he asked to die is when he was called to preach the word of God to the people of Nineveh. He didn't want to do that. He wanted all those people to just perish and die. Mm. And because he had to preach the word to give those people grace and mercy and goodness of God, he got so angry that he asked God to let him die. And now he's asking God to allow him to die again because the worm ate the gourd. I have something for us to consider for our own lives perhaps due to our own bad attitude or our bad spirit towards others. We can create worms in our own lives to destroy the blessings we once had. Mm. So how was your attitude? I have to check my attitude daily. I check it in the morning. I check it in the middle of the day. I check it at the end of the night. And if something is bothering me or has come into my space or my life, I have to check it every moment of the day if I have to. And more importantly, are you or are, am I creating worms in the lives of others? We may very well be destroying great blessings because of our attitude creating worms. That's something to think about. In verse 9, God said to Jonah, Doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? There's another question. First, do you do well just being angry, Jonah? That's something we ought to ask ourselves. Is anger causing us to do well or is it causing us grief? And he said, this is what Jonah said. He said this to God. I do well to be angry even unto death. Now, right there, 
That's a little bit of sarcasm. That's a little bit more anger. It's just downright rude. God is trying to help him. God has given old Jonah grace. God gave him the gourd. He gave him opportunity to come out of the fish. Wow, help us, Lord, for the heart is truly deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know the heart? Sometimes we cannot see the forest for the trees. Verses 10 and 11 states, Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored. In other words, you was happy for the gourd that came up to give you shade. But Jonah, you didn't even create the gourd. You didn't plant it. You don't get any credit for it. Do you even recognize who gave you the gourd? Did you even wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Lord? The Lord continued to say, neither made us it to grow. You didn't labor for it and you didn't get it to grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. Now that right there is a blessing and a miracle from God Almighty. That plant rose up in the night to give that man shade. And in one night, God caused it to perish. In two days, we've seen the hand of God. We ought to pay more attention to God's hand in our lives. And should I not spare Nineveh? This is what God says. Should I not spare Nineveh? That great city wherein are more than six score thousands persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and much cattle. In other words, you know that six score? One score equals 20. And so six score is 20, 40, 60. Amen? And you know, it's amazing. It's amazing that God has his mind upon the people that he has created. And he has given us his word and his spirit to go share the gospel to everyone. But there are times where we just don't want to do that. In other words, God has stated to Jonah, I have tried to work with you, Jonah, in every way possible to show you my grace and my mercy, just as you have stated out of your own mouth, Jonah. Amen. That I am God, good God. I'm a good God, a gracious God, a merciful God, a God slow to anger, a God of great compassion. Jonah himself stated that. But he wasn't stating that to give a compliment. He was speaking about that on our last program, that God was so good that he was going to give them another opportunity to repent. That's the people of Nineveh. And he didn't like that. And just as I've shown you, God said to Jonah, this grace while you were in the belly fish and again by creating a gourd plant to give you shade, you seem to be happier about the gourd plant more than the people and the human beings. You still choose to walk by the flesh and embrace a bad attitude. The next time you have an attitude that's not gracious, that's not good, remember, you're then walking by the flesh and not by the spirit. Again, I say to my flesh, sit down, and I allow my queen to raise up. I will spare this great city, Nineveh, because they have obeyed the voice of my commandment and I will continue to save, continue to save anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Well, we know more about Jonah. We know no more, excuse me. We know no more about Jonah's and God's relationship. But we do know one thing, this important thing we do know. God is good and full of mercy and grace. So I ask you, my listener, a question. What lesson did the Lord and the God of heaven and earth teach you today. Whatever that lesson was, please trust and obey God, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Listen to the word of God. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is a bridegroom 
coming out of his chamber. This is the Lord Jesus and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. We have a good God, a strong God. A God can take care of every need you have. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from heat of the heat thereof. The law of the Lord, it is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and a honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them, that is God's law, there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me, O Lord, from my secret thoughts and my secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright before the Lord, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. That's found in 19, Psalms 19, verses 1 through 4. You are also invited to join me this Sunday, and let's worship together. Help us near Missionary Ministry Church Sunday School begins at 10 a.m. In, and 11 a.m., worship with us during our Bible study class every Wednesday night. We break bread twice with the Word of God and then a bite to eat for our tummies. How about that? Great and exciting things are happening in God's kingdom. We are located at 24448 Ecourse Road, Taylor, Michigan, 48180. Please feel free to call me, 248 636 5793. As always, I am delighted to serve you the Word of God. Help us near missionary ministry. Ask for you to partner with us by spreading the gospel all over the world. Prayerfully consider sending a financial blessing today or perhaps make a pledge to financially support. Help is near monthly. I'm sure your reward will be great here in the earth and when heaven comes. Let's keep the light shining bright and let's keep it shining together by the teaching of God's word. I'm Reverend Dr. Monica D. Cronk pastor of Help Is Near Missionary Ministry Church. Until next time, remember, fellowshipping with God is the best part of life. Amen. This has been a Help Is Near Missionary Ministry broadcast with Reverend Dr. Monica D. Crunk. Continue watching her every week and feel free to contact our ministry with your prayer, praise, and testimony. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, please prayerfully consider sowing a financial seed into the ministry. Our address is P.O. Box 432-032, Pontiac, Michigan, 48343, by phone 248-636-5793. That's 248-636-5793. Or contact us by email, helpisnearministry at gmail.com. Until next time, remember, help is near.